Recording this program is entirely fictional and made by a sole Canadian man. All characters and events in the show, including the host, even those that are based on real people, are entirely fictional. The following program contains mature subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. America, the land of opportunity, fueled by immigration and innovation, with just a touch of authoritarian despotism. Here in these glorious United States, there exists a vast criminal underworld stretching from sea to shining sea. And if you look closely at our utopian American settlements, you may just find the stain of criminal activity in more places than you ever thought possible. Tonight, on the season finale of Grand Theft Auto Geographies. In tonight's episode, we will wrap up our examination of Liberty City in the early 2000s. We have been to the mob-patrolled streets of St. Mark's in the Red Light District on Portland, to the business centers of Bedford Point and Torrington on Staunton Island, and tonight we will look at two more unassuming neighborhoods on the edges of the city limits. Though one might think there was nothing to say about a typical American suburb and unremarkable hydroelectric dam, the bloody history of Liberty City has made these districts the stuff of local legends. Join us as we learn the truth about Shoreside Vale's Cedar Grove and the infamous Cochran Dam just a stone's throw away. Cedar Grove is a district whose physical geography ironically matches its place in the city. Being a suburb consisting exclusively of large, multi-story McMansions, the district is home to some of the city, the state, and the country's most wealthy and narcissistic individuals, with a view to match their decadence, looking down upon the city they so proudly conquered. The only buildings in the Grove which are not residential are the Cedar Ridge Observatory, located on top of the Namesake Ridge, though access to the observatory is strictly prohibited to the public and cannot be reached by civilians, and a single warehouse in the district around the year 2000, which has since, presumably, been demolished. At both the northeastern and northwestern edges of the district, a tunnel connects to an expressway linking the city with the rest of Upstate Liberty, with the western tunnel entrance also branching off towards tonight's other district of interest. Located in the northwestern corner of the Liberty City limits, Cochrane Dam is easily one of Shoreside Vale's most recognizable features. The dam itself is one of the largest hydroelectric power plants in the state, and powers much of the city and the upstate Liberty area, using the energy harnessed by the containing water in the Cochrane Reservoir. The top of the dam serves as a civilian road connecting to the eastern and western halves of Shoreside Vale, and serving as a bridge between Pike Creek and Cedar Grove. At the base of the dam is a small loop of road, which runs southeast back into Pike Creek, but access to the inner walls or maintenance building are strictly off-limits to civilians. Cedar Grove borders Wichita Gardens to its south and the dam to its west, while Cochrane Dam itself only borders Pike Creek to its south, the river to its west, and of course, Cedar Grove to its east. The history of Cedar Grove and Cochrane Dam are inextricably linked, as we will learn tonight. In 1998, during his rise to prominence as a businessman and media mogul, the infamous failed mayoral candidate Donald Love would take up residence at a mansion in Cedar Grove for a short time, where he lived in apparently complete isolation. In a complicated set of circumstances, Love would come under fire, literally, from the Colombian cartel, and be forced to flee the mansion and ultimately the city to buy himself enough time to strike back. Two years later, in 2000, Uptown Yardies leader King Courtney would operate briefly out of the district's warehouse, though it's unclear exactly where this building was. A massive shootout would take place at the building between Courtney and presumed Leonie associate Mike, though both survived the encounter and it's believed the warehouse was soon after demolished. The next year, in 2001, Love would flee the city entirely after working with another infamous Liberty City resident, Claude, who wound up right back at the Love Mansion when confronting his ex-girlfriend and now head of the cartel, Catalina who had seized the mansion following Donald's departure. The details of what happened next are fuzzy, but according to witnesses, Claude chased Catalina all the way to Cochrane Dam, where a massive firefight erupted along the walls of the dam's inner courtyard. The fighting would conclude with Catalina's helicopter being shot down, and a death toll well into the dozens. Police would continue finding bodies for days following the massacre, and some sources even claim that among the dead was ex-wife to Salvatore Leone of the Leone crime family, Maria Latour. The district has also been known to be home to several other noteworthy residents, including the famous actor Black Lightman, and briefly, Tony Cipriani himself, who ironically would be the one to kill Lightman for Ned Burner, according to our sources.
Thanks once again to the wonderful GTA Wiki for pointing me in the right direction. It seems as though Cedar Grove is likely based on parts of Jersey Shore, as well as the wealthy parts of Long Island and Westchester. Once again, given how small and simple parts of Liberty City are, and especially the underdeveloped Shoreside Vale, it's hard to say for sure exactly what the developers had in mind when designing Cedar Grove, but any of the wealthier suburbs of New Jersey and outer New York are likely candidates. Given the similarity in the naming convention, it seems probable that the Jersey Shore was the most direct inspiration for Cedar Grove, but the presence of the nearby Cochrane Dam doesn't make it any easier to pinpoint. In fact, Cochrane Dam's placement in general appears to be a bit of an anomaly slash creative decision, since there are no large hydroelectric dams in New York City or New Jersey at all. There is a hydroelectric dam in nearby Niagara Falls, but Cochrane Dam is much bigger when proportions are considered, and the dam's design is completely different, with the in-game dam more closely resembling the famous Hoover Dam at the Colorado River, with its two large intake towers. Who knows why Rockstar decided to include this dam in the first place, but it seems to me that it may have been chosen to simply serve as a set piece for the final fight against Catalina and the cartel. As a small nod to one of their developers, the dam is named after Adam Cochran, credited on the GTA 3 website back in 2001 in lore as being named after someone important named Mr. Cochran. Thank you so much for tuning in to Season 1 of GTA Geographies. We have looked at nearly every nook and cranny of 3D-era Liberty City, and that means it's time to move on to the south coast and the sunny beaches of Vice City. A couple of things though, going forward there will be some format changes. I will be restructuring the series to cut some of the fat and keep the episodes fresh. But one thing I have decided is from now on, Geographies will be every other Friday instead of every Friday. This will give me time to make the episodes longer, more detailed, and more accurate, and avoid burnout slash content fatigue, as well as rushing. My goal is to make this channel 100% fan-funded, so consider joining my Patreon starting in June, as I will be restructuring things so you can get more stuff for less money. And thank you to all my viewers and patrons so far for all of your support. Look out for the Supercut of Geography Season 1 next Friday, and until next time, I'm your host, Guinness Walker. Thank you guys so much for watching.